Anime. Yeah. Anime video games. Ah. Uh, go off anime video games. Oh, don't judge. I've been out video topics to do. Four. Golf. Everyone loves golf. I mean, it's the only sport that allows me to soar like a birdie and make puns that are on par with my boogie skills. That being said, who the frick played Wii Sports Golf and was like, ooh, me likey, but it needs more sassy anime shoulders. So naturally, I was curious to see if there are any anime golf games out there, and to my surprise, there were actually a couple of them lying around. Who thought these were a good idea? Hi, I'm Eric and I do everything, and with me being the ultimate ladies man that I am, I decided to play a couple of these weird and wacky golf anime games to see if they're any good. Alright Timmy, what game is up first? A golf MMORPG anime PSP game? That sounds oddly specific. Huh? Panga? That's a wonderful whimsical word to say. Panga, 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 panga. What the frick's a panga? Panga. This thing got to start as an online MMORPG golf simulator that was made by Korean development companies Nebirsoft and NCSoft, who released the game in 2004 under the name Apatross 18, which honestly sounds like an 18 plus game for birds. Hey, birds are culture too, you know. Then, on March 8, 2009, SG Interactive saw this obscure online golf game and was like, ooh, me likey, I'm gonna buy it, rename it Panga, and put it on the PlayStation Portable as well. It's totally gonna be a success. <laughs> Yeah, only sold 140,000 units, which in comparison to the most popular PSP game with 8 million units is quite sad to see, but there seems to be a cult following that loves this game, which is pretty interesting. Alright, let's check this game out. Let's play ball. Aw, this is a cute and wholesome opening. Totally nothing wrong about it at all. Since when did golf get so sassy? Seriously, this opening is just as questionable and wild as the breast physics in these characters, but I gotta say, I really love it. The opening, not the breast physics. Anyway, after the opening, entering my name, and choosing the story mode, we are presented with some deep, epic lore on how Panga came to be, and which is quite complex considering the nature of the game. Okay, so there's this island called Panga that was going through some evil pearls. Oh no! Thank goodness this earthly came along and had a genius idea to stop this demon with the power of golf. Now you might be wondering how he did that. <laughs> well, it turned out that this evil demon energy was all coming from this conveniently tiny hoe, in which he simply put a ball into this hoe and saved the day. Okay, seriously, did no one even think to put something in the hole to stop it? Come on, people, I know this is a kid-friendly game, but still, can you imagine depression being solved by covering up a hoe? Well, at least the sport was made in Panga Island to honor the hero, which was simply called Panga, which helped turn this island into a popular resort that sometimes gathers earthlings to participate in a Panga festival. This is where our main character is introduced, Scout, who is a young kiddo whose father is known for being a Panga master that defeated some demon dini. I don't know, I gave up on the lore of this game long ago. Anyway, this guy was brought onto this island by his caddy, Pippin, who teaches Scout on how to be the ultimate Panga master in his words, in which Pippin doesn't exactly agree with him, considering this kiddo hasn't even played a game yet. This leads us to the tutorial where we introduce to some of the game mechanics such as hitting the ball, questioning our life choices in the sand, and... Uh, drugs? After learning about the game and doing extensive research on this golf game, I come to the conclusion that it's golf, but anime. Oh whatever, I know how to play this game now, let's get to the actual game. Alright, story mode time. In the beginning of the story mode, you get to choose which story you want to choose, and which only Scout and Hina were unlocked, but I mean, come on, you can clearly tell who the other characters are. This guy totally looks like Travis Touchdown from the hit game Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Anyway, I personally kept in Simpo and selected Scout, in which the story centers us taking part in the Wing Trust Cup Tournament in order to become the Panga Master and win his cool prize called the Air Lance 2, which was made by Wing Trust, the biggest club manufacturer on Panga Island. Ladies, don't you hate it when your loved one doesn't know how to Sweeney Golf Ball? Well, with a new Wintrust Club, he'll still freaking suck at Sweeney, but now he has glitter effects and summons magical green screen sharks. After talking some more about Panga Island in general, we come across the first competitor, which is no, no, Uncle Bob. This guy's legit a stereotypical American guy, and I freaking love it. <laughs> this guy just scored a home run in golf. 
Anyway, let's talk about the gameplay, shall we? Man, is this game fun. And honestly, this game in general is just super underrated as well. I could see why this game has gotten a cult following over the years. Well, you see this meter dinghy? Yeah, that's how you control how fast and far you want to hit this golf ball. By first selecting how much power you want by timing this button perfectly into the white part in order to hit it perfectly, or as this game calls it, get a panga. The purpose of this game is to, well, get the golf ball into the golf hole. It really is like golf. I mean, you have the wind meter, you can control the spin of the ball, and you can occasionally boost yourself by using the super power dinghy that allows you to perfectly hit the ball wherever you like. This combined with the overall charm and creativity this game has with its approach and the story really makes this game a must play in my opinion. Alright, I beat Officer Bob. I wonder what the victory screen's like. Okay, I am gonna meme the heck out of this. <laughs> Alright, well, that was something. Who's next? Ah, it's that dancing girl from the opening. And boy, is she the most annoyingly flirtatious character. <laughs> I don't know what's worse, the fact that she's constantly calling me cute, or the fact that it's making Scout blush. Ha, take that, I beat you. All right, who's next? Oh no. Okay, Blackbeard, he's a thing, right? Great, now imagine him as an 11 year old Lolly. This is fine. All joking aside, I really love the majority of these characters in this game, as they are also charming and pretty creative. I mean, come on, a magical girl, a policeman, and a little pirate lolly duking it out in golf? You can't get this anywhere else, and I freaking love it. And that's not the only thing that looks amazing. I mean, look at these courses. A whimsical snow land, the ravenous mountaintops, the QC cherry blossom course filled with virus in color. This game really delivers on all those aspects, and I gotta say, I really love this game and totally recommend checking it out. Now, as much as I would love to go on and on about this game, there are other golf games I need to talk about, like these. Uh, Timmy, what the heck are these games? Dan No, what the heck's a Dan, uh, Dandy? No, uh, Dan No! Dan Do. This is a show in source manga centered around golf that stars Dan Do, an S baseball player who decides to play golf after finding out he could win big money in the tournament, which could help his family out of financial issues. Man, what a legend. What was I doing in my life in fifth grade? They made two video games based off the series, with the first one being Dan Do, Tobase Sonori no Smile Shot, and the Game Boy Advance. Well, let's check it out. <laughs> This is a 0 out of 10, there's no demonic breast business in the opening. I can't really say much about the story of this game, as the game is in Japanese, but boy do I have a lot to say about the gameplay of this game. This is a GPS, these are things you can use to get from one place to another. Okay, now imagine that, but you can only go into a straight line to get to your destination without turning at all. Yep, that was this game in a nutshell. You cannot choose where you want to hit the ball at all, as it only allows you to hit the ball in one direction every single time. With the only way of changing the ball ever so slightly is by using this thingy to curve the ball slightly towards the left or right. You won't believe how annoying this gets some time. Other than that though, it literally plays like Panga, strangely enough. I mean, you got the meter to choose your power and time it, and which if you time it perfectly, you get a special shot. The only aspect I consider this game to be superior to Panga is with the music. Surprisingly, this game has amazing music. Like seriously, listen to some of these bops. Oh! Other than that though, this game is really nothing special, but it isn't bad at all. There's just some annoyances and weird mechanics that you have to deal with. I mean, imagine this game having the most cursed anime sprite ever. <laughs> oh man, that made my day. Alright, let's talk about the other Dando video game now, which is Dando SI for the Game Boy Advance as well, which came out a year after the previous game, so hopefully they improved the game. Let's check it out. After the opening, typing this beautiful name, selecting the main story mode, and going through a cutscene telling us that we are facing someone in the game, we finally get to the gameplay, which is surprisingly a big improvement from the last game. Yeah, that's right, you can actually control where you want to shoot now, what a groundbreaking achievement! But other than that, that's pretty much all they changed for the gameplay. However, they did change the looks and the story of this game for the worst. Firstly, while the last game did have some pretty questionable sprites, it was bright, colorful, and filled with charm. This game, in comparison, just looks boring and plain. As all the courses look the same, the colors are weirdly muted to the point where it seems like it's going for realism, and the courses in general, for the most part, has no obstacles besides an occasional sand pit. And despite the last game having quite a bit of cutscenes and a couple of clear challenges you needed to do to complete the game, in this game, you are literally doing nothing but facing against a CPU for the entirety of the game who always gets parsed no matter what. 
Look, if you're going to make a game based off an anime, you really need to have some unique charm or something that makes you stand out from the rest of the games. That's what these two games were missing, and it's honestly such a shame, because these games were great and aged pretty well for the most part, but it's just lacking charm in every way possible. Then again, not everything can be as charming as me- No! Oh! Seriously, Timmy, stop that! Speaking of getting old, this is Pro Golfer Shavu, a 1985 obscure golf anime that got its own Wii game for some reason. In which I could find no information about it on the internet. Yeah, that's right, no reviews, no Metacritic score, and the only videos on YouTube I could find on it is an 18 second clip of it and an obscure Japanese speedrunning clip of it. I might actually be the first person to ever go into detail in this game, which is honestly quite exciting, yet worrisome at the same time. Timmy, how the heck did you even find this game in the first place? <laughs> Really? That's how you find games to talk about? Come on, really? Man, that's lazy. Only losers who wear a purple wig and lives in their parents' basement do that, and definitely not ultimate ladies people like me. Well, you found it for me, so might as well play it. After the title screen, we first encountered a tutorial in which we learned the basis of this game, in which we get to choose where we want to hit the ball by using the Wii Remote pointer to pick where we want to hit, then having to time your shot by timing your Wii Remote screen when the Kanji Shimbo gets too big, which results in the most confusing and over-exaggerated cutscenes ever. After the tutorial, we are tasked with selecting a character, in which I chose the character that most closely resembles me. Man, isn't it uncanny how similar we look? Alright, I love joking around, let's actually play this game. Frick yeah, my character is freaking badass. This legend literally went to the nearest weapon store, saw some nunchucks on sale, and was like, yeah, I could hit golf balls with this. Ooh, I gotta see this club in action. <laughs> All joking aside, this game was super satisfying to play. Sure, I freaking suck at it, as you could tell by the gameplay, but still, it was honestly really fun and creative. My favorite part from the game were definitely these power shots you threw throughout the game. These power shots appear if you decide to get creative when taking your shot, allowing you to witness cutscenes that are pretty freaking awesome, like watching water come out of nowhere giving you a boost, and allowing you to do whatever the frick I'm doing here. <laughs> Quite honestly, the only thing that really worries me about this game is, A, the controls. It is honestly really annoying trying to time we were most swings to these inconsistent Kanji symbol randoms you have to time, which results in a ton of out of bounds scenes, even though I swear I time it right the majority of the game. Oh man, I lost the game? Oh well, what happens next? <laughs> No. I don't know who the heck this guy is, but he kinda creeps me out, but oh well, he's pretty harmless as all he does is choose his next stage. Alright, fine, what stage do you got for me? Do your worst. <laughs> oh, oh no, how the frick are you supposed to hit a golf ball up there? Okay, I don't know whether I'm high or the mountain's high. Yes, I did it, yay. Well, that was honestly an amazing game, but man, I need to break from all that golf action. Are there any casual golf games I could play, Timmy? Uh, I'll allow it. There aren't exactly many console anime golf games out there, so I'll let it slide. What's it called? <laughs> Birdie Crush? What's that? Is that a game where you can crush birds with your golf clubs? Birdie Crush is an anime golf mobile game made by Come To Us, a mobile game company known for creating mobile games such as Tiny Farm and whatever the frick this K pop thing is. Birdie Crush is your typical pay to win mobile game but with cute anime characters playing golf. Alright, let's give this a try. Well, this is awkward. There's a lot of personal information that gets showcased on my side of the screen during the recording, so I can't exactly use the footage, my bad. But if you are looking for a typical time killer MMORPG app that you honestly know what you're getting into before playing the game, this game was honestly pretty fun, albeit a bit easy, so give it a try. You might like it. Oh thanks Timmy. Super Swing Golf, that sounds fun. Remember the Panga PSP game? Well, they made a Wii version of it as well and gave it a completely different title for some reason. Oh well, I mean it can't be that bad then. Right, well let's play the game, shall we? Oh no, what the heck happened to you, Scout? Yes, this is the same Scout we're talking about. You went from the ultimate ladies man to this sad excuse. God, look at that neck. That neck is more complete arched up and slouched than the freaking golden arches. 
this game took one look at the Panga PSP game and was like, yeah, this is nice, but what if I remove all the charm the PSP game had? Panga, more like, uh, Pang, no, oh, get wrecked. <laughs> Thankfully, you can customize your character as time goes on though, which does make things a bit better, and from the clips I see on YouTube, the character customization is actually pretty good for the most part. Though I honestly didn't get really far enough with this game to take full advantage of these customization features. Despite that though, I have a love-hate relationship with this game, as while it does have awful animations that make the character looks like he's trying to dry hum a golf club, the gosh darn horrifying cutscenes, and courses with no charm or uniqueness that looks like it came out of a free 3D golf world pack, it still was surprisingly an amazing game. Yeah, this game was actually pretty fun to play, even more so than Wii Sports Golf. Yeah, that's right, I said it, screw Wii Sports Golf, this game is much better to control than that junk. <laughs> nah, we'll be fine, the internet never is mean to me. Oh my gosh, the swinging mechanic in this game is a freaking masterpiece, and surprisingly accurate as well. As while it doesn't exactly feel like golf, the motion controls are damn near perfect giving you that impression. That being said though, it isn't perfect. For example, the camera you use before a shot isn't really all that helpful, as it only gives you a far away top down perspective shot and a really close shot with no moving allowed. Another annoying thing about this game is the fact that there's no left handed option as well, so a certain purple haired loser had to play this game the right handed way. But honestly, these are really small complaints from an amazingly designed game that takes full advantage of the motion controls. And I'll be honest, the more I play this game and understand how it works, the more I fall in love with this game. Don't get me wrong, you're still better off playing the PSP version but for a more competitive standpoint, this is probably the best anime golf game there is. Which is kind of weird to say, considering people don't usually associate competitive gameplay with a freaking Wii. <laughs> yeah, that game was fun. What's next, Timmy? Yeah. Remember the Panga PSP game? Well, they made a Wii version of it, which they made a sequel to that Wii game, Super Swing Golf Season 2. Alright, let's do this. Oh my gosh, there's a left-handed mode, 10 out of 10. Honestly, this game is just a better version of the last game, as not only did they make the game more accessible to 10% of the population, which not even freaking Skyward Sword could do, but they legit improved pretty much everything from the last game. Now don't get me wrong, the cutscenes are still pretty cringy, and the game doesn't have the same amount of charm the PSP game brings, but the fact that they made some things much more accessible and better, such as the camera and the fact that you can see what adjustments you need to make with your swing, this overall is definitely the superior game of the two. Other than that though, I mean it's pretty much the same game but with a new tour mode where you can travel to different stages while completing challenges. As well as there being a practice mode and whatever the hell this thing is that makes me question how the frick this got an everyone 10 plus rating. Oh man, I'm tired from all that swinging. That felt like a workout. Oh shush Timmy, you don't even have any hands. You know what, I I'm done with these golf games. <laughs>